here. When we're in the garden, we plant our seeds in soil. We've already spoken about places in your home that you can find seeds, but you might not necessarily have soil in your home. So it got me thinking, do we even need soil to grow plants? The short answer is no. In fact, there's an entire method of growing called hydroponics, where you grow plants in materials other than soil, like these clay pebbles or rock wool, and then they're fed liquid nutrients. Today, we're gonna experiment with ways that we can grow plants without soil. But the first thing that we need to do is think about what soil gives to plants so we can figure out what we need to replicate. First, soil provides a place for the roots of a plant to grow down into the ground and hold it in place so that it doesn't fall over. So we'll need a material that our plants can hold onto and grow down into. Second, Soil acts like a sponge. It absorbs water and it holds that moisture in place so that our plant can drink it up when it's thirsty. So we'll need a material that can soak up moisture. The last thing that soil does is it provides nutrients to the plant. So the final thing that we're gonna need to do is figure out how we can feed our plants. Today, we're gonna try and mimic all these characteristics of soil using things that we can find in our homes. After looking around my home, I've decided I'm going to experiment with a sponge, cotton balls, and paper. Beyond whatever you choose to replace soil, you're also going to need some small pots or containers. Anything can work, but if it has holes, make sure that you have a tray to put underneath them. You'll also need seeds and water. This activity is simple. First, prepare whatever you're going to be using as soil. I decided to leave the cotton balls as they are, but I shredded up the paper and I cut the sponge into smaller pieces. After you do this and fill your pots, you're going to want to wet your materials. You do this before you plant your seeds so that you don't accidentally push them down to the bottom. Remember, this isn't the same as planting in regular soil. When you plant your seeds, you want to think about how you would plant them though. Make sure that they're deep enough and make sure that they're covered. Over the next few days, check on your plants and make sure that whatever material you used hasn't dried out. If they do feel dry, add some water. Within a few days, this is what my plants looked like. So, we were able to get our plants growing without soil. But, the question is now, how are we going to give our plants nutrients without having to go to the store and buy liquid fertilizer? The answer is compost tea. Compost tea is a liquid plant food that you can make at home using your food scraps. Today, we're gonna to be using banana peels and eggshells. I chose these ingredients because banana peels are rich in potassium and eggshells are rich in calcium, which are two nutrients that plants need to survive. To make your compost tea, you're going to need eggshells and banana peels. Put them in a bowl and cover them completely with water. Then. Cover the bowl with plastic wrap and let it sit for one to three days. It'll take less time to turn into compost tea on hot days and it'll take more time on cool days. As the food scraps soak, they release their nutrients into the water. When you're ready to use your compost tea, strain it and then mix it with equal parts water. You can use this to water the plants in your hydroponic system, but it's also great if you have house plants. Don't let it sit for more than three days or it's gonna start to smell. I wanted to be totally sure that compost tea was a good way to feed our plants and that it was actually nutrient rich. So I decided to ask an expert, my mom. You may be wondering what makes my mom an expert? Well, she was featured in the New York Times because she's passionate about composting and she happens to be a science teacher with a focus on hydroponics. She made her own compost tea and tested the nutrients. Let's see what she had to say. Now that I've made my compost tea, I want to see if I can actually measure the nutrients in it. This is a tool that helps measure parts per million of nutrients by looking for electrical conductivity in the liquid. This one on this side is just plain water. And this one is measuring 95 parts per million so very, very little nutrient. This one on this side is my compost tea that I made by soaking one banana peel and two eggshells for two days. I'm going to clear this. 
and this one is registering 1,200 parts per million, which means that there is more than 10 times the amount of nutrients in my compost tea than there was in the plain water. I can certainly dilute this and use it to feed my plants. There you have it. Compost tea is a great way to feed your plants if you don't have soil. A little over a week later, and my plants look like this. You'll notice that not all the materials gave me the same result. Before you start this experiment, maybe guess which material will give you the best results. Then each day you can measure your plants as you grow and see if you were correct. Let me know what works for you. Until next time, bye.